In this video, we are going to go over the GeoBoard app uh, from Bridges. So I am going to open this app in the web, in my Chrome browser. And let's go over a few of the features that are unique to the GeoBoard. Down here, I have three different layouts for my GeoBoard. I have the square, which is what it's defaulted to. I have a rectangular GeoBoard and I have a circle GeoBoard. I'm gonna go back to the square. Some options that students have is they can add grid lines to their geo board and they can also add numbers to their geo board. So I'm going to unclick those. Students are given rubber bands down here to use just like they would with a regular geo board. So let's pull one up and let's create a shape. So I'm just going to use a yellow band and all they have to do is they click and drag and drop and it's going to drop to the two closest um, pegs on their geo board. So from here, what students are going to do is they can click on one of the pegs and they can move the location. So if they didn't want it to be going up and down instead side to side, they can move it. The other thing that they can do is clicking in the middle will stretch their rubber band just like it does a real one. And so you're going to stretch it to another peg. And if I'm trying to make a square, I would then click in the center again and drag to my square or to my peg to make a square. So that is how students use um, their rubber bands. Sometimes I have students who build like this. They'll drag a rubber band and drop it. They'll drag another rubber band and drop it and then they'll move it like this. So they can do it this way as well. Um, there's not really a wrong way to do it. Um, but sometimes then that happens right there, what happened to me, which can become frustrating to them. Um, so I would recommend teaching students how to use one rubber band um, to to build one shape rather than using four to close it in. Now, let's say I wanted to get rid of this here. I'm going to click on one of my rubber bands and I'm going to come down here to the trash can and it's going to delete just what I've clicked on. So see how it just clicks, deletes that one side. And so I would have to do this for all of them. Or you have this lovely little refresh button right here. And if I click that, I'm going to clear all of my work. It makes sure that I really want to do that so I don't clear it by mistake. And I will click clear all, giving me a fresh board. Now, if students have done some work and you want to see that work, Bridges now has this really nice built-in feature. So down here in your toolbar, you have quite a few options, um, which I have not gone over beyond your board grid lines and numbers. Um, you can fill in selected bands. So this is the only band I have. Um, I can fill that in. Um, I can unfill it. Let's, let's create another shape up here. So now this is the shape, the band that's filled in. So I could fill that in. This one is going to automatically fill or unfill everything on my board. This is a screen um, or a shade. So I can move this around my board and cover things up. Uh, it allows my students to really just focus on one thing. If I've got multiple shapes, I can make this bigger or smaller. And then if I click on this eye, it reveals what's underneath and I can click on it again to hide it. So that's pretty nifty. Um, you know, students have the ability to type in numbers and equations. Um, they can type in text if you wanted them to label something. They can draw uh, on their board. Um, maybe you want them to label how many sides the shape has, label all the sides. Um, so they can just draw like that. So then the neat features here, if I've given students an assignment to do and I want them to share it with me, so maybe we're working on shapes on a geo board and I want to do a quick, uh, a quick check to see where everyone's understanding is. So I ask them to create a specific shape on their geo board and then I want them to share it within Google Classroom. It makes it a formative assessment, something I can quickly check. Students are going to come down here. We have this nifty little key and then next to it we have a share button. So I'm going to click that share button and I can save the image. This, um, on a student's Chromebook, it they do have a very small file folder, 
and it saves right in there, which they can access from Google Classroom, or they can copy a link from this. So if I copy that link, if I go into Classroom, and I'm going to go into Classroom under a different account so that I, um, so that I look more like a student. Oops. And let's go into a class and let's see if I can find, um, okay, I have an assignment here that has absolutely nothing to do with GeoBoards, but let's, let's use this one. So we're going to click View Assignment. So now students here can add or create. I did not attach anything for students to do. So if I click that Add or Create button, now I have some options. So if students saved it as a picture, they would upload a file. Um, and so what that looks like is it pops up this window, they click the blue browse button, and um, they're going to have some options over here. If they go to recents, it should be their most recent photo. Um, but we are going to add a link. So we're going to add or create, and here we're going to click link. And students just control V to paste it, add link, and then they would mark their assignment as done. So now let's click on this link. And this is what my teacher would see. They would see the work that I have done. So that is how students can use the GeoBoard.